Hi everyone, this is Miss Johnston with your Unit 2 vocabulary for English 3. I just want to remind you guys to make sure that you fill in the part of speech on your vocab homework for the squares and that you also don't steal my sentences. You're going to want to write complete sentences on the or in the column that's all the way to the right, but don't steal the sentences from this slideshow. Develop your own sentences. So let's get started. Our first word is altruistic, which is an adjective. The definition for altruistic is unselfishly concerned for or devoted to the welfare of others. This is a word that was also in the article, What Makes a Hero? It was just um, used as altruism, as a noun, but we have altruistic to describe people who are devoted to the welfare of others. So just like in this picture, many altruistic people volunteer at our local soup kitchen. Our second word is archetype, which is a noun. The definition for archetype is the original pattern or model from which all things of the same kind are copied or on which they are based, a model or first form. It's also kind of like a prototype. So really, if you break it down, what an archetype is, because that's a really long definition, archetypes are symbols that occur across time and cultures. So what we've been talking about for so much this marking period so far is the idea of a hero. A hero is an archetype because you can see um, figures like a hero, like a damsel in distress, or a trickster across stories in all different cultures from across the world. So the hero is an archetype in many stories from across the world. Our third word is commiserate, which is a verb. To commiserate is to sympathize with, have pity or sorrow for, or share a feeling of distress, like these little guys in the picture. So it's really when you're commiserating, you're kind of feeling for each other in a way. Uh, you're sympathizing with with a person. So a good sentence is, the students commiserated about the difficult vocabulary quiz. So let's make sure we study for the next one. Number four is egregious, which is an adjective. The definition for egregious is outstandingly bad, extraordinary in some bad way or shocking. So this is usually going to describe acts that people commit that are extraordinarily bad. Um, just like in this picture here, uh, the architects of the bridge didn't realize their egregious mistake until it was too late. The two sides of the bridge did not connect. So that is a very extraordinarily bad thing to have happen. Number five is elicit, which is a verb. Elicit means to draw forth, bring out from a source such as another person. So um, to draw out or bring forth, usually referencing emotions, responses, answers, or information. So like a teacher might try to elicit responses from their students by asking them to raise their hands. Or like in this picture, the investigators attempted to elicit an alibi from the suspected bank robber. Number six is enjoin, which is a verb. Enjoin is to direct or order. So even though it says enjoin, it's not like to join things together. Don't get that um, kind of confused just because of the way the word is spelled. Enjoin means um, that you are going to direct an order. Um, always directed toward uh, people, I guess maybe sometimes animals, if you think about um, maybe like giving dogs orders or something like that. Uh, usually it's more official than that though. So like in this picture, the drill sergeant enjoined the soldiers to drop for 100 push-ups. Number seven is equitable, which is an adjective. Equitable means fair, just, or embodying principles of justice. So this is an idea um, that is similar, but not the same as equal. Just because something are exactly equal does not mean it is equitable for everybody. Just like in this picture, on the left side, these three individuals got an equal box, the equal size box to stand on in order to view the baseball game. But it's not actually um, a good solution for everybody to see the game. So what is more equitable is if we um, offer the different size boxes for those who are shorter so that way they can all actually see the game. So the family was provided with boxes in order for each person to have an equitable view of the baseball game. So on the right side, it is equitable because even though the one person has two boxes and the other has none, they actually have an equitable view. 
Number eight is gauntlet. Sometimes you might have heard this um, in a phrase, throw down the gauntlet, which means to challenge someone. So the definition of gauntlet is a challenge, an, an ordeal. Um, you can also see this connected to sometimes knight's armor in a way, so it kind of it might help you think of challenging. But um, to use this as a noun, you can kind of think of this picture and this sentence, climbing Mount Everest is a gauntlet that few people have been able to overcome. So the idea here is that Mount Everest is a very difficult challenge and that it is a challenge that, um, that someone might want to attempt at some point in time. So you can kind of exchange gauntlet for challenge, but a lot of the times it's going to be used when talking about something that is extremely challenging, um, even though it might not be challenging to some, but to, to one person it could be extremely challenging to the next, but you're always going to want to use this word when it, it's kind of an extreme challenge. Number nine is implicit. So let's make sure we don't get implicit and illicit mixed up with each other. We already had illicit, which means to like draw forth or bring out like the investigators that we saw in the earlier picture. Implicit is something that is implied. It's describing something that is implied. So our definition from for implicit is implied or understood through unexpressed, though unexpressed. Um, so there's no doubts or reservations or anything like that. It's not obviously stated, but it is clearly understood if it's implicit. So this is a really silly extreme example, but it was an implicit rule that students could not park their car in the gym. Nobody's going to write that rule in the student agenda. It is just understood that you do not end up driving your car into the building to park it into the gym. So it's a rule that is implied. Number 10 is irrevocable, which is an adjective. The definition for irrevocable is incapable of being changed or revoked, called back. So even though it has revoke as a root word for this uh, word, it is going to be pronounced irrevocable. So if something is irrevocable, you can't take it back. You just can't take it back. It is absolutely irrevocable. So like signing a contract, you can't take it back. Once your signature is signed, you have to fulfill the contract. It is irrevocable. So a good example um, when thinking of sports, after many losses the first season, the players were annoyed that their coach's five-year contract was irrevocable. They just can't take it back. Number 11 is munificent, which is an adjective. The definition for munificent is extremely generous or lavish. So this is going to describe a gift or a person that is extremely generous. Um, a good example here for a sentence, the wedding guest gave a munificent amount of money for a gift, $10,000. So that's pretty unheard of to have a wedding gift be that high. So that was extremely generous, very munificent of those people. Number 12 is panacea, which is a noun. The definition for panacea is a remedy for all diseases or ills, an answer or a solution for all problems or difficulties. So it's really a cure-all, whether thinking of a sickness or just a problem. Um, so it makes me think of cough drops. A good sentence for that is, my grandmother thought cough drops were the panacea for any sort of sickness. So it doesn't matter if you have a small cough of the flu, pneumonia, I'll just give you a cough drop. That'll make you feel better. So that's kind of an idea where that is a panacea for something. Not always the truth, but thought of as a cure-all. Number 13 is pernicious, which is an adjective. The definition for pernicious is extremely harmful, deadly, or fatal. So if something is pernicious, it is able to cause um, death, it is able to cause extreme harm. So this can um, describe people or things. So maybe someone is so evil, maybe we have a villain so evil that they are per pernicious or certain things could be pernicious to people or animals. So for instance, in this picture, chicken bones are pernicious to dogs because they can splinter and can actually cause death. Number 14 looks a lot like the last one, but it is different. This is pretentious, which is an adjective. So pretentious, the definition for that one is done for show or striving to make a big impression. So a lot of the times there's a negative connotation with pretentious. These are people 
um, who think they're better than others or look down on others. And like this cute little pug in the picture here, um, he's kind of being having a pretentious attitude toward humans because he says, I love dog whistles. You've probably never heard it before. So he's being pretentious. The pretentious pug looks down on humans who can't hear dog whistles. Number 15 is regress, which is a verb. Regress is to move backward or to go back, to revert to an earlier state. This is only going to apply to people and animals, so only people and animals can regress. And in this picture, you can kind of see an older looking girl kind of regressing back into childhood to the point where she is so young that she's a crying baby. So she might regress. A lot of the times we talk about how people can regress in maturity. Um, or another example, my 11-year-old dog Tino seems to regress into puppyhood when he plays with his two-year-old cousin Elliot. So the two of them might play and run around like puppies, but my 11-year-old dog is a lot older and normally doesn't run around as much. So he regresses when he's starting to play like a puppy. Number 16 is restitution, which is a noun. The definition for restitution is the act of restoring someone or something to the rightful owner or to a former state or position, or it could be considered making good on a loss or damage. So um, the easier, shorter way to try to remember restitution is just to restore something or to make good for, of something. Um, so a good sample sentence is the woman received $20,000 from her car insurance company as restitution for her stolen vehicle. Number 17 is sang Freud, which is a noun. Sang Freud is um, composure or coolness, especially in trying cir circumstances. So you're kind of keeping your cool, um, even when you're in a tough situation. This is a noun, so don't use it to describe somebody who is keeping their cool. You would instead say something like, a person has much Sang Freud, or uses Sang Freud, or is full of Sang Freud. So a good sample sentence is for a person who is extremely terrified of public seat, public speaking, Sarah seemed confident and full of sang Freud. Number 18 is a funky word to say, but you say this one, sepulchral. So 18 is sepulchral, which is an adjective. There's not actually a negative connotation to this word, even though it might seem like it's associated with um, dark things. So Sepulchral is going to connect to places of burial or gloomy, dismal things, but it's not a negative connotation. It's just kind of describing it for what it is. The sepulchral Halloween decorations turned my neighbor's front yard into a graveyard. So we can kind of see those images in the picture that connect to a burial place. So that's why we would describe those decorations as like sepulchral Halloween decorations. Number 19 is stalwart, which can be an adjective and a noun. As an adjective, it describes a person or thing that is. And as a noun, it is the person or thing that is. So for the definition for stalwart, it is strong and sturdy, brave, resolute. Or it could be a strong supporter, one who takes an uncompromising position. So for stalwart as an adjective, as we said, it describes a person or thing that is either um, very strong and sturdy, or one who has a strong support for something. So for a sample sentence for an adjective version of stalwart, we have the stalwart protester attended every Black Lives Matter function. And then for a noun, it is the person or thing that is strong or sturdy. So it makes me think of something like a tank, something very strong and sturdy. The sample sentence is the large tank served as a stalwart for the army to go into battle. So we can kind of see both forms of that word. Number 20, last but not least, is unwieldy, which is an adjective. So we see this guy over here struggling to carry this box. When we use the word unwieldy, it is relating to size or complexity. So for the definition of unwieldy, it is not easily carried, handled, or managed because of size or complexity. So it's difficult to handle. And in our sample sentence here, we have Bob could not carry the unwieldy box up the stairs. So that's it, guys, for your Unit 2 vocab words. Um, make sure you study and not just study the definitions and the words, but actually think about what the words are connected to and associated with and how they're used, because that's how our sentences are going to be on the quiz. So good luck, guys.